Yo. Let's see. If uh, someone in the chat just let me know if this is streaming. And then we're good to go. And yeah, uh, let's see. <laughs> Ban everyone, then we can go home. Yes, solid start. Great. Thanks, Pom. Um, sweet. Yeah, Ferris, your mod. Uh, I'm, I, so basically, folks, I've allowed um, I've allowed links in the chat, but uh, if if you can kind of sanity check them for me while we're doing this, that'd be awesome. Right. Like, anyway, that's that's boring stuff. Let's get going. Um, so yeah, we're um, I'm Bagus. If somehow you didn't know that, um, I'm going to be streaming about some. Basically, I've been doing this Keppel thing for a while. I did this talk like a month ago where I was talking about Keppel. I've been doing this for a while, and. I need to bring this up. And I feel like I've, um... One second. God damn it, Shimera. Already? Okay. Yeah, I've been, I've been doing this for a while, and I've learned a lot about, uh, like, abstracting GL and making some Lisp stuff, but I haven't learned so much about making graphics with OpenGL. So I thought I would start doing these streams where I, yeah, fail online. And um, we kind of do this together. So... Let me put myself down in the corner here and we can actually get into some code. So, I guess you guys in the stream can um, tell me, like, uh, like I guess a, a lot of you are kind of Lisp people or have looked at Lisp stuff before, so I don't have to explain too much into that. Um, we're going to be using a simpler mic. There's a few projects that are kind of involved here. We've got um, Keppel which is a project I made that abstracts OpenGL and lets you do that in Lisp and makes it kind of feel nice. I'll also be mentioning uh, Vario from time to time because once you have like that stuff working, um, writing some of it in Lisp and then some of it in GLSL just kind of proved to be a bit of a headache swapping backwards and forwards. So I decided to um, make a little compiler so we could yeah, just move between. I'm gonna stick this chat over on the side because you guys are more interesting than me. Let's put that there, nice. Um, and yeah, so that's another one I'll be mentioning. I'll probably be mentioning Nineveh every now and again, and that's like a standard library for Keppel because once I got all of this working again, like you, you start writing the same functions again and again, and I wanted to get away from that where possible. So today, man, I, I, I felt like I wanted to start uh, digging into some graphic stuff and a good place to start with noise functions. So we're going to be messing around with some noise functions today. We're going to pull apart. Um, yeah, just start pulling apart and see how they work. As you can tell, I'm fucking nervous because I haven't done this before. So uh, bear with me as I mumble my way through all of this. And yeah, keep chatting because that keeps me sane. Right, so we are going to be playing in a little thing called Fraggle, which is basically shader toy. Uh, well, like a very small shader toy. We've got some stuff responding here. On the left-hand side is basically the entire program. So um, we have... A main loop down here, um, and this is calling step fraggle every frame. Um, this is what's being run every frame, and that's as a frame, which means it's going to do clear at the beginning, and uh, <laughs> thanks, Ferris, um, and swap at the end. And then we're going to take uh, the vertices from a quad and map them over this, which is a pipeline we've defined up here. Now, pipelines are made of GPU functions which are defined up here. Um, when, you, when you make a GPU function, which is done by defungg, it doesn't initially know... Um, increasing the font size would be great. Cheers, Shin. Um, I was wondering how that was going to come through on the stream, which is a bit of a bug because it's going to... Bud code. It's going to make this harder for me, but let's see if we can do... Actually, let's just move some of this down. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Is that any better? Hey! Hey, man. Right. So, yeah. Um, GPU functions, when you write them, don't know what they're being used for. They don't know if they're just a regular function or if they're going to be used as a stage. Uh, and it's only when you either call them from inside another GPU function or you use them in a pipeline that they know what they're going to be. Um, this keeps everything kind of nice and generic. 
So this function up here is becoming our vertex shader and this one here is becoming our fragment shader. And right now it's just taking the normalized mouse coordinates and using them as the R and the G, and, oh no, sorry, R and the B of our color over here. And the middle one's reacting to mouse buttons. So if I click, we get ugly flashing. We're gonna tear this apart soon enough anyway. But I'm gonna take the fragment shader as this is what we're gonna be working with and move it into its own file called foo. Yep. Okay. Let's just make sure that is actually responding and make it all red. And let's not make it red anymore. Cool. Hey, Nobby 2. Nice. Love your work, guys. Um, so, right. Let's jump over. So, I was reading the other day about some uh, noise functions. Okay, so I was looking at Perlin noise, which is really sweet. And it's used everywhere and it's kind of like i know how to use it i'm used to kind of like taking a few different octaves and adding it together and it looks nice and we can just do that over here like berlin noise and then take the uv and then we do that we can't see it very well and it's all red don't want it to be red there we go and let's uh zoom out a bit and it's all uh, mapped into the wrong place so i'm just going to map it from minus one it's in the minus one to one range now and I want it into the zero to one range. Anyway, so yeah, we've got Perlin noise. We mess around with that a lot, but I want to understand kind of how it works. And I'm kind of interested to see if we can do that just by tearing it apart. Now, I have looked into a little bit of the theory. Let's have a look up here. Oh no, I don't have Perlin noise up yet. Let's go get Perlin noise. Perlin noise. And uh, there we go. The general theory is, let's have a see. Probably says it around here. Algorithm detail. Okay, so the general idea is you have a grid, and then each of the corners of the grid, we're gonna make a random gradient and then interpolate that together in some way. Now the key point there on each of the corners, it was a random gradient, so we need some source of randomness. And this in the function that I've seen is generally some kind of hashing function inside there, the kind of the core of that. So that's what I'm gonna start with. And I think today we'll just look at the hashing functions and then probably go a little deeper later on. And there was this dude called Brian Sharp. Actually, I should, I'm should. i going to post this in the chat because it would be useful for other people to be able to see this. Let's go get that. Links for everyone. Yeah, that guy. And this guy was awesome because he broke it down in a way that I understood. And then also he was... Um, he had a whole library of this stuff. Uh, sitting on GitHub, so I ported all of it over to Lisp the other weekend, but I didn't actually bother about. Uh... Oh, hey, chat links. Yes, that's happening. Um, I didn't dig too deep into what the implementations meant. I just made sure they were working. So let's go do that. So, hmm, where do we start? Oh, I'm swapping. I'm swapping between computers here. I am such professional. Yeah, so in his article, he talks a bit about mod and starts getting into details here. And then he talks about this first hashing function, this blum blum shove hash. And what was nice about this was a not a texture based hashing function. It was just kind of computing things on the fly. And that's what I'm interested in right now. And so we're going to take blum blum shove and we'll take that apart. Now, this isn't normally used inside Perlin, I don't think, but we can. So let's let's start there now. That kind of noise looks like this. Let's go get some blum blub shove hash. I'm gonna pick the low quality version. I've got a higher quality version, which is just this, and then a lower quality version. The low quality version is the one from the original paper. Um, oh yeah, I know, I'm, I'm like Ferris saying, uh, oh no, it's Shumera saying, you're only professional once you get technical streaming issues. Oh, they're coming. I'm sure they're coming. This is like, and, and everything is like super janky. We've got that, this dodgy old Microsoft webcam that just decides whether I'm going to look pink or blurry or whatever, anytime it likes. So, and it's Lisp and I wrote everything. So it's going to just break. Come on, let's do this. So anyway, we've got a hashing function and we're going to feed it UV. And that's very close. And it looks a bit suspect. And when we zoom out a bit, we see complete garbage. And I even know the reason. So if we go and look at the documentation of this, which you probably can't see very well. Um, let's 
put this here for a second. The documentation says um, that it needs zooming in. That it, oh yeah, grid cell is the argument and grid cell is assumed to be an integer coordinate. So let's go and floor this. Okay, now we're getting some random noise and it's weird colors right now. And again, in the documentation, it tells us why. Oops, come on Emacs. We will fight each other, Remax. There we go. Um, and it's generating, because it can, um, a random number for each of the cell corners. So up here, each of these squares, we're generating four random numbers. And then that's being presented as color. And that's, you know, that's going to be a bit confusing to look at it all at once. So let's just take one component of that. And red's a bit much. So let's do this. Cool. So this is using that, the function, but we want to start looking into it. So I'm going to jump over to where the source is and take it and dump it here. And some of the other functions that it uses, which I know are these ones. And let's dump them up here as well. And I think the font's a bit small again. Let's, let's do that. Okay. Now, if we recompile everything, then we should be using this file now. So if I just make this return red for now. Oh, white. Oh yeah, of course it's white. Yeah. It's returning red. We're making it white. Sweet. Yeah, right? Like, uh, so Ferris is saying uh, lots of patterns on those left two rows already. Yeah, like it's not a particular great hash. In fact, if we, if we zoom out a bit, let's uh, make this 200. We will see some nasty artifacts there. And so this is one of the reasons you don't use this so much. And, th and there is, like I say, there's a slightly higher quality version. If we just knock off the low quality, it's like, that's a little better. You can still see tiling and stuff in there. Um, but again, it was uh, one of the earlier papers. It's, um, yeah, science, right? So um, let's just, yeah, let's just get into the business of taking this apart. So the first thing that... Um, goes on let's let's just have a look at what we're doing with the numbers over here so we're taking uv 200 flooring it passing it into this function and the first thing that we're running into is this guy so if we do that it's completely washed out which makes sense in fact i'm going to put that 200 in its own variable called malt for a second so i can then divide by it and we can fiddle with that number a bit more easily Okay, so yeah, like we've got, we're taking a number from zero to 200 and we're, um, and we're, we're packing this stuff into this vector here. And that's fair enough. So it's X, Y, and then X, Y plus one. This is, I guess, cause we're doing the uh, four corners. So it's shifting it by one down and we won't be able to see it that easily at this multiplication. But if we get down to like the 20 range again, um, and we pick, y instead of x oh no y is vertical now okay how about z yeah yeah that makes sense so we got z and if we go to if we go x and then we go to z this should shift left a little and then right we've shifted right and then i guess it's w and y yeah those are the two similar parts there um Let's have a look what's going on here. So we have, we want to have some... Oh, cool, you've got some interpolation functions. Implementation, sorry. Uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, like, um, for those in the chat, we've got some links. I might post those in the doobly-doo when this goes on YouTube and everything. But for now, I'm going to stick with this just because I'm going to get, like, super confused. And this is all on the GPU, which is nice. That's that's kind of the real bit I'm interested in. Like Perlin did some great write-ups of getting things working fast on the CPU, but it was this stuff that started making it a bit more amenable on the GPU side. As far as I understand, I don't really know what I'm talking about here. This is like, at this point, we're gonna fail, fail forwards. So we're gonna pack a vector, and then it does this prepare thing. So let's look at what happens when we do prepare. And then I'm guessing, whoops. I want my REPL back up again, because I feel really weird without that around at all times. Uh, 
Okay. So let's just make sure that, yep, we're all still running fine. Cool, so prepare is up here. Okay, so we've got this, um, sorry, prepares here. So we're doing a mod with a fixed denominator. Okay, this is um, a little macro that is, it, it's essentially mod. If we change this to mod, you're not gonna notice any difference at all. The um, thing was in the article by Brian, he mentioned that like, hey, mod should just be expanded into this kind of format, um, which would allow uh, for a fixed denominator that divide to be optimized away. But apparently not every GPU does it, so I just put a macro in that's going to expand to that form. And then we're a bit more likely to get the um, performance we want. So mod fixed denominator is just mod. So let's go down here and we can just say that we're taking the mod of this with uh, 61 as a float. Okay. And we're not seeing anything interesting on here because our range here right now is 0 to 20. So if we stick it up to 200, then we can see the banding. And I'm guessing if we switch back to X, we're actually seeing that go left to right, which is cool. Uh, one of the things I get a bit like aware of um, when I'm doing this is that the eye is not super good at like, like your eye's response to color is nonlinear. So I like to be able to have some graphing as well. So what I wanna do is I wanna put this in a format where I can graph it at the same time as we're kind of working through this. So I'm gonna take this out. I'm gonna leave malt there maybe, and we're gonna make a local function. Called test func x float. And we'll put this here. Yeah, it takes a float, returns a float. Um, that should be a place to start. And then we are going to, am I gonna graph this function? Actually, you know what? I think I'm just gonna start with graphing, just, just looking at how mod behaves over a range. So if we do mod x and let's put it at 0 0.3 or something, and then we'll graph this test function, graphic on the GPU, just did that recently. Okay, cool, right. Alcamo? Yeah, GLSL and Lisp. Ah, oh, it's good fun, man. This is good stuff. And if you want at any point, you can just do pull G and then the name of the thing that you were talking about. And then you just get all the GLSL back, which is just, oh, it's fun. Okay, so we've got a little graph over here. And see, first class functions is what we've got going on here. So we're passing a function into this graphing function. And that's drawing what we're seeing. Why am I gesturing with my hands? I've got to get used to this. Right, this bit is being drawn by this function. Cool. And if we want to shift the mod, let's have a look at the, we'll just take the Y coordinate of our mouse knot, and then we should be able to shift this here. Okay, good toy. We've got this. Let's get back to calling the blum blum shove stuff. We'll put this Nah, let's just put this down here. Is that working again? Oh, it's super red because we haven't got that divide here anymore. Oh man. I've got to get used to doing this with peoples. Okay, back to where we were. So he's doing a mod and then we're getting these, these chopped up, which is cool. And then after he's preparing it, he's sticking in hash cord so we can look at hash cord and we'll see no difference. And then he's taking hash cord and he's chopping it up with swizzle and then he's pushing it into permute. So let's see what that does. Well, we can actually look at what that does up here. Let's just jump to code. Okay, so it's gonna do, it's gonna square the input and then it's gonna do a low quality modulus over 61 again. So, Let's have a look. First off, I guess the question for me first is why square it? Um, and that's going to make like a ramp, but I'm not sure how that interacts so much with mod. So what I think I want to do is like, let, let's shove that back in the graph again. And see what, um, see how the squaring affects this. So let's just uh, switch these forms over. Let's graph. 
And let's take x and we'll square it. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, and we can mess with this again. Okay, and then things get kind of tiny, but but like we can see at least there's a difference. This is the yeah, mod's kind of cool. And this is just a piece of this curve. So if this curve went up here, these are the chunks. We can just shift them up into position. And so that's chopping that off. So at least then we're getting different ramps kind of for everything. One of the things, again, like color is useful sometimes. It's hard to tell at this point, like down here, what's happening to these values. Like the graph function I've got will like returns to what works. Okay, so in um, this Lisp stuff, we can, we have first class functions. We also have, um, yeah, I could scale X, but not Y, totally. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, that was, sorry, that was Ferris asking if we could uh, scale in X rather than Y, we totally could do that. Um, in fact, actually, yeah, we can we can graph, let's, um, let's make another temporary variable here. We can say range, and we're gonna do this in range from zero to four and then zero to one. So that's zero to four on the X and zero to one on the Y. And then we'll go down here and we'll use that in the range of the graph function. And then, yeah, we can see a bit more. Cool, there we go. And there's some stuff happening. But, okay, so yeah, we're getting, we're getting thin. I think this might be more illuminating again later. Let's just see where it was going with this in the original. So he takes the hash cord and he squares it, hash cord by hash cord. Obviously it gets really bright because now um, this divide is way out there. Yeah, it's just like we're ramping the number, so that makes sense. And then he's doing another mod, a low quality modulus, which has some artifacts, but for the sake of argument, let's just say we're doing mod here with 61. Okay, and now we're seeing like... Could you see the curve getting it? Sorry, uh, Ferris is saying, I'm gonna get in that. I will get in the habit eventually of saying, because I don't think I'm gonna put the stream on YouTube. So, sorry, the chat stream on YouTube. So I've got to get in the habit of saying what people are up to in the in the chat. Um, yeah, they were saying the, the curve was getting aliased? In the, oh, it, do you mean in the graphing that we had before, Ferris? Switch between water and coffee to keep me suitably jittery. Maybe. Let's see. Let's just make sure I'm not missing anything on the stream. Ah, oh, yeah, in the graph. Yeah, like, I, I wasn't too clear on it, but um, I'm, I'm gonna try something in a second which might make it clear. What, what's interesting to me is over here, we're getting these patterns, and I don't entirely get why, like, we're, 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 yeah, yeah, totally. Like, it, it's, it's really cool. Like, so you mentioned it, uh, each repeating bit with like a piece of the curve. And then, there you can see the curve. Oh, okay, I think I get you. I'm not entirely sure. Um, however, essentially because of the squaring, the curve increases too much for the bits further out. Yeah, the bits further out, I'm wondering how much that's related to, it's gotta be related to this. Like we're doing the squaring and modding and then we're getting this pattern. Now I wanna see if we can see that in our graph version. Like, so if I swap back to this guy, and then I'm gonna take well, Ferris has given some more information here. Let's have a look. Um, however, eventually because of the squaring, the curve increases too much for the bits further out and it looks like you get a slower curve due to curve aliasing. Oh, cool. Well, that's what that's called. So one of the things that my graph function does here is we can do, um, it returns two values. It returns the uh, pixel color for the graph over here I'm just going to fix this at something for now. Let's go and put that. No, no, no we'll leave it. Um, it returns the color for the graph, and it also returns the value that it was graphing at that point. So if we just do uh, gcul and we'll call the other one val, and then we'll pull this down here, and then we're going to do we're going to blend um, the gcolor by 
And this is a vector 4, so the value's going to have to be a vector 4. Sick! There we go. That's what I'm talking about. And like straight away, other than as well as, well as being able to see that the um, ramps are getting smaller, like if we drop this right down, I'm, I'm not sure how much the artifacts are coming out, but I'm starting to see exactly the same, like this, this guy over in the thing right now. I'm getting a really fat band. Um, I'm going to bump up that color for you guys in case you can't see it. Yeah, look at that. Those are the same bands that we were seeing before. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? Because like it ramps and then you're chopping it off and then it could be like the, the bit you've chopped off is still bigger and then that wraps around. But yeah, you, you could wrap around in a way that it's the same value for a few pixels or whatever. That's really interesting. Oh, cool. Okay, so oh, I, I, I only wrote these graphing functions the other day and I'm just loving them. They were totally stolen from... Um, Hornet had an implementation on uh, Shader Toy and somebody else, actually it was like, there was a, a post on like high frequency graphing functions in GLSL. It's, it was cool. Anyway, yeah, let's, let's turn that, turn that down. By the way, are you, are you folks able to see the bands over here? Like when does that become, like if I put it down here, are you able to see any banding or is that just completely chewed up by the encoding? Nice! People see it! That's good. It'll, it'll say it might be a bit clearer in the recording as well. We'll see. Okay. So I'm kind of satisfied that I'm a little more clued in on where those bands came from. Okay! Okay, so for some of them... Alright, so I'll, um, I'll bump up the... When I bump up the... Um... The dark's absolutely crushed. Cool. That makes sense. Okay, so I just got to remember when we're doing this, like, just uh, go in and multiply this by something. Like, if I if I multiply this by 10, like, that's showing up. That's showing up now, right? <laughs> I will just have to pump up some of the vol like the uh, the colors when we need to when we need to use those. It's just awesome, actually, just how much clearer this stuff is when you shove it as a color. Some things are way clearer as a graph and then just some things are way clearer as colors. I need to like, oh man, I, I, this is so fun. I'm just totally new, to, <laughs> so fucking new to actually doing stuff with this. And I'm just gonna ignore you guys and play with this forever now. Right, end of stream. I'm happy. Right, uh, let's get back to our hashing function. Okay, so we, we got to this stuff. And I, like we have an idea of where that pattern's coming from now. And so that's essentially what permute was doing. So at th this point, like P, when we look at P, yeah, that's that's what it looks like. That's what P is. So that's X of P, I guess. Yeah. Oh, whoa. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's meant to be returning. Um, oh yeah, I'm meant to be returning a vec4. Okay, I'm, I'm just doing this in the wrong place. Let's go and change that back and say continue. I meant that down here, where we take the x of the hash value and get rid of the... I have to have this stuff on to, um, like, the that big red mark is just telling me I've fucked up with white space, and if I don't do that, all of my repos just look like shit, so, uh... Oh yeah, sorry by the way that this thing is marked as adult, but I'm gonna fucking swear every now and again, because it's just, I'm at home and I'm coding. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll just have to lie if you're young. Who's doing Lisp anyways? Five. More people should be. Okay, so anyway, that was X, and this is Y, which is just very slightly shifted. So that's our plus one. How about Z? No, nope. oh, this is the same. Oh yeah, of course it's the same. Sorry. Uh, we've been packing it up here. There's X, Z, X, Z. So that, that, that makes total sense. So that's what P is right now. And then we're going to take... Oh yeah, we've done P. So then we add this. No, all of it. All of it in the world. Let's take all the code. Right. Okay, cool. So now we've done like in one direction. We've wrapped it and we've modded it and we get a pattern. And now we've just layered the other stuff over the top. <laughs> Swearing is an integral part of the Lisp experience. 
the spirit. Yes, and how dare you fucking pun on my channel. This is disgusting. Um... I swear you can swear. I'll try. Uh, professional at this point. Right, so focus, Chris. Focus on the code. Right, yeah, so we've got our pattern and we've laid the other um, kind of value slope over the top. There's our other values. And then it does permute and resolve. Okay, so is he just going to... Yeah, he's going to do exactly the same thing. It looks like this is two operations kind of squashed together. So this was probably a low quality, like this is probably a low quality modulus and then like it was redundant to have a, do all of that computation and a fract. So it just combined everything together. So let's just look at, let's look at this part. So this, let's put this in foo. That's foo, foo, and then... Okay, so that's, he's ramped it and then he's pulled it back down into a, in the same range. So that was kind of boring. I was hoping to see more there, but it's, it's the same stuff. Oh, man, I, if you're going to pun, I'm not even going to read out your comments. I'm just going to have to check everything you say now. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, yeah, so we, we've laid some values in the other direction going over, and then we're going to take the fract of it. So let's just... Whoa. Let's do this. And we can't see anything because, of course, we're multiplying it. We're dividing it by some stupid number. So let's just take this to one. And there's our final pattern. Okay. That was... Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, like... Take some numbers, ramp them, chop them down so you get some kind of, like, perturbation, then... Lay the other numbers over the top and ramp them and 2D ramp and then chop that down and and fract it. That that kind of makes sense. <laughs> First say sorry to distract. See, I'll read out when it's not a pun. Uh, dude, don't stop. This is great. Like I, I just want a bunch of people hanging out and playing with this. Like, if if you want me to poke around anything specific in the code, just yell in the chat because we can we can fiddle with this. Like like fract is mod one, so let's just try modding it by anything else. So we'll just say mod by, ugh, fuck. Okay, uh, mod by two. Oh yeah, of course, ugh, yeah, that's that's boring. Like we're gonna get the same kind of thing. Just kind of, oh man. Wonder what would make actually the biggest difference to. Whoa. Oh yeah, of course, if I don't. What could we play with? You're changing what we raise it to the power of, I suppose, but like it's kind of predictable what we're going to get. It's just like changing the ramp and um, the sinus-looking stuff must be aliasing as well. Periodic x squared aliasing of the yeah, like it kind of makes sense. I mean, we can see the issues on and the, like the period. This will be like the full range from here to. Here, I guess, because this is going to be the left-hand side, of, sorry, the right-hand side of one of these, so is this, yeah, the period all over is 61. Oh, yeah, wait a second, I remember reading about something like this in the paper. There was some artifacts that were really cash, and I think one of them was... Da, 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 da. It mirrors itself in the middle, which is, that's actually the middle of it then, so... That makes sense. This is 0 to 200, so this is 0 to 61 odd over here, and this is the, the mirroring. That, oh yeah, that's the right hand side there. Ew. That's gross. So given, so given that artifact, what is the... Um, let's look at the high quality one quickly. Like, that's that. And all it does yeah there we go i haven't left a note here this second permute is not in the original paper but it lessens the worst artifacts so set p to be p oh no that's <laughs> that's wrong um okay so he's just sticking another permute through it basically oh why am i switching uh let's get back into code here 
I'm forgetting which commands were Emacs and which were my window manager. Uh, yeah, so low quality, go up here. So he was taking this and then doing another permute over it. Yeah, that was it. Uh, he's just doing the same kind of thing. And permute was uh, ramp and not. So we're seeing the same pattern. Okay, so it was just like we can we can we can fudge it by sticking an extra one on top and it looks better. That's fair enough. Okay, so like while I don't understand every choice of number and the kind of whys, I guess like that's kind of what the paper's for. Uh, <laughs> If you squint, you can see a bunny in the 16 shades of depth. There's always a uh, yeah, stand for bunny in there somewhere. Um, I'm kind of happy with how Blum Blum Shub works. So I'm thinking I want to pick one of the other ones. There's another uh, hashing function that, like, in this library is actually used along with the Perlin. And so I think if we just take that one, and, and look at how it works. And then we'll have like two and we can compare and see if there's any. I want to know basically, is there a pattern? If I was going to go about making one of these in this style, like would following this pattern of like, oh yeah, ramp some values and clamp them and sign them, like, sorry, clamp them and mod them in some way. Is that, is that, is that a sensible approach? So unless you folks have anything else in the chat real quick, then let's go grab that second hashing function. You have some seconds to reply. Mmm, caffeinated brown. And then non-caffeinated, not brown. From your silence, I will assume the stream is dead. And I will carry on. Let's jump to this. Du -du 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 -du. And I've got a few different hashing functions here. There's his quick hash, but there's actually this uh, permutation polynomial hashes. Yeah, this guy. Okay, so this is the equivalent, I think. We've got a hashing function and we've got a few helper functions, which are already like even just glancing at this. Let me bring it up a bit because I know the text is a bit small. Um, even just glancing at this, we're seeing like similar stuff. There's permutes and there's prepares and those functions are looking similar. So let's, uh, yeah, let, let, let's, let's go back to our thing again. Not you. And let's get rid of this. Actually, before I go any further, I'm just going to go down to blum blum shop and <laughs> Sips non caffeinated clear. Exactly. Uh, right, Dan just uh, recompiled the plum hashing stuff in the other file. Um, okay, where do we start? Same place, I guess. Let's, um, let's compile these guys and go down here and call it sgim qpp hash. Now, that's a, I'm going to zoom in very slightly on this guy. Where's Malt again? 150, because this has, like, some patches of really nice noise, but look at this smearing. <laughs> it's, like, it's all over the place as well, and in the same direction. That's kind of weird. So that's the, the chosen compromise for this one. That's, hope you guys can see that well, because that is, oh yeah, like, like, hey, look at this white noise. I'm sure your codec is really doing a great job at representing all this. Oh man, one second. Let's uh, let's get into, f let's mold it by 50 and then I'm gonna, wait a second. If we're taking the UV and flooring it, let's just add um, the mouse normalized and we'll times that by, you know, 100 or something. So we can, we should have mouse control now. Yeah, here we go. So like, yeah, over here, look at, look at, at the bottom right-hand corner. Even in the bottom left, look at that smearing. That's super weird. There it is again. Oh, that's a big run of it. Cool. 
I don't know what it means, but I just know, I suppose, I suppose you can look at this and go, well, if you're using this, you're going to have some of these artifacts somewhere. I wonder, hmm. Kind of depends, yeah, how you're sampling from this as well. Very interesting. I wonder how much this will show up in, uh, I, I guess we'll play with some terrain at some point and, and things that use these hashes and see if we can spot the results of those artifacts. Okay. I mean, like, combining a couple of things, they're all going to get washed out anyway, but... Hmm. Right. Mouse control's off. Zoom out a bit. Let's, uh... Let's... Do something with this. 200 again. Noise, noise, noise. Right. Oh, not noise. Hashing. Um... Yeah, I was actually a little um, mixed up on the difference between the kind of noise stuff and the hashing stuff. But the hashing functions are just like, hey, you take an like a, a unbounded range of some kind and you map it into a very bounded range. That's like the hashing functions job, which makes sense when you think of it in like hash maps and all this kind of stuff. I just haven't done much of the theory on those either. So it's, yeah, I guess it was, uh, yeah, not something that immediately came to mind. So we're mapping into a small range, in this case, zero to one, and we're mapping... Um, Integers. Mapping all integers into 0 to 1. Might be interesting to put mouse on zoom and see if those streaks are stable. I could definitely put the mouse on the zoom and like, um, like, what do you mean by stability though? One second, I'm going to switch over and have a look at a gif. A gif can't hurt anyone. Said no security X, whatever. Enhance. <laughs> Good man. Yes. Right, let's uh, let's bring up all the things again. Um, okay, right. Let's uh, this number here. We'll 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 screw around with this number. So if we just do like, say, fifty is the minimum plus fifty, and then times the y coordinate of mouse norm by a couple of hundred. And then we should be able to see Eh. Well, they're everywhere. But I don't know I'm not sure exactly what we mean still by uh stable ferris in this case. So I was just wondering if you can Oh here we go. Yeah. I meant to see if the streaks are still there at different zoom levels or stuff's just lining up with a particular zoom sampling pattern. Oh no, they 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 still seem to be like they're around. They re they repeat through this. So I wonder if it's just like if they if they're using a different. Uh, let, let, let's pull it apart and then we can make some guesses on uh on what's actually going on here. But woo, zooming everywhere. Help your compression. Right. Yeah, Ferris. That's what you can do. Make a compression that's uh good for this, which I know doesn't make sense, but uh, still. Specifically for coding streams. That's what we want. Um, like you need more projects right now. Okay. Right. Let's let's just go and pull this apart in the same way we did before. Um, we've got some values. Let's go draw those. And of course, this is can't be seen. And then again, we're exactly the same kind of packing as before x, y, x, y plus 1. So these are our numbers from 0 to 200. Boring. And then we're going to do prepare on it. And we're going to go and look at what prepare is this time. And prepare is fixed denominator 289. Again, we're just doing some. We're causing it to wrap around at some point. And this is not going to look any different because now we're going to have to zoom out a bit further. Zoom out. And again, we can see the same kind of thing as we had before. Yep. So far, it's feeling like we've got a pattern here. Okay, so we've modded it. And that's stuffed in hash cord. Yep. And then we take the hash cord and we swizzle it a little and we throw it into um, permute. And again, we're seeing the same kind of thing. Now, let's have a look up here, though. Okay, so this is a little different. I wonder, like this guy. Okay, there's quite a bit here. Oops. I'm trying to work out if there's a bit we could just 
graph somewhere. Right, frac. Let's take this frac chunk and just see what we can get out of it. Who knows if this is going to work. We, we don't want that V4 here though, because we want to put a float in here. Ugh. Okay, really? You're just going to work? Bloody hell. <laughs> this is all really new code. I didn't expect this to actually work. Cool. So... Um, oh yeah. Idiot Chris. We need to change our range down here. So our range is from 0 to 4 right now. Let's put it 0 to 15. But again, we're, we're looking at... Again, same kind of thing. We're putting a... Whoa. We're putting a curve on it. And it's just a different different curve function, which makes sense. I mean, that's what you would guess from looking at that like this. The 34 is the only really kind of magic number there. The 289 makes sense because that's what we're modding over. So, yeah. And X is included in the multiplications there. So, again, it's operating on itself, so we'd expect some kind of curve. Oh yeah, we got that frac there as well. I suppose we can take that out and see what this looks like a little bigger. Range. Oh yeah, and then we're... We can't see it. For reasons. Okay, let's see what's going on over here. Um, ah, you're rounding the sampling points before sampling the hash egg. Yeah, I definitely need more project... <laughs> yeah. Definitely need more projects, especially compression ones, totally. Yeah, like it's, um... Yeah, right, this is, uh, you take away the fract and we just get a big old curve. And, I mean, that makes sense. But this just feels like exactly the same. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick an ugly divide in here just because I'm trying to map these. I, I know this is ugly as fuck, but yeah, like we're, We've got a curve, and then we're chopping it off, and we're laying these values over the top of each other, and we're just picking curves and combinations that work. That really looks like what we've got here. And again, like, picking the size of your period, like, which I guess is like, it kind of depends on what you're using it for as well. Everything's kind of content-driven in the end. I mean, I see staying purely kind of theoretical, but... Yeah, we're going to permute, then we're going to do, like, we know what this ad is going to be. This is going to be the uh, data going, it's the Y's and W's, so it's the data going the other way. And then we do exactly the same. Permute, his permute and his resolve steps are separate in this one. That's interesting. Um, I guess I guess it was just wasn't more efficient to, to do it another way. And again, we have a, a bit of a, again, I don't know why 7, but I don't think I need to know why 7 to get what's actually happening, though. Um... Let's let's take this and shove it in. The, the only bit that I, a little hazy on right now is okay, let's get rid of that. Foo with ooze. Okay, so we've got this, and then resolve is. Scale. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's. This is probably balancing. Wait a second. What's um. What's. Two eight nine uh, divided by thirty four. Eight point five. Okay. I thought that might be seven related somehow. But that's two eight eight. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure where these magic numbers are from. I'm not sure if you guys can guess. Um. Yeah, definitely. The fract is pulling things right into the right range view, which is kind of like the, um, like in the first one, we had the divide by um, 61. Like you, we scaled it and then we pulled it back down into a reasonable range. I think that's, I think I agree with you. The fract stuff is just, like the fract chops it down to one and then he immediately multiplies it by 289. So he pushes that back up to, needs to be in that range for some reason. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I can kind of live with that. Um, yeah, and then we do this at the end and chop it with a frac. I mean, the frac just seems to be a good way of like, yeah, chop it off and the the 
stuff after the zero is nice and nice and noisy at this point. Yeah, we're looking at exactly the same thing. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at what the effect of... No, this is just a scale. I thought there was more going on here, but it's not. It's just... It's just we take this and... Whoops. Take foo. Don't know why I'm writing it like that. And then mapping it into... Ooh. Yeah. We're scaling it down before we call fract on it. And then... I wonder why he does that. Eh, but... Maybe precision stuff? Don't know. One, one quality of... Um, like, there's there's one restriction that the Blum Blum Shub stuff had that this doesn't, and that is that in the original paper, um, the guy was targeting 16-bit and 24-bit machines as well. So, like, he couldn't... Like, that's why his, his, uh, he chose uh, 61, because with that hash, the general theory, according to, like yeah, Brian mentions it in the, um, in the link I posted. Also, like if you go read the original paper, that's really interesting. I flick through to the noise part and it's just like the original theory was um, you're squaring it and then modding it by a very large prime or the multiplication of two very large primes or something like this. Um, and he went, yeah, 69 is big enough. That works for... <laughs> <laughs> for our purposes, which is cool. I like that. But these guys probably didn't have the same um, restrictions. In fact, this is uh, Stefan Gustav something. Let's have a look. Let's not just make up a name for the man. Let's actually see what, <laughs> what he's called. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, Stefan. Neil McEwen. Cool. Yeah, so they've been doing a lot of stuff and the uh, permutation polynomial thing that we've just looked at is, real, is uh, I think this version is based on something they've done. So they don't have the same restrictions. So I guess so that's why 289, bigger numbers, stuff. I bet, I bet there's a load of just like tweaking with this kind of stuff until you get something that looks decent. I mean, you're probably doing it in a bit smarter way of like, having something analyze what comes out of it and looking for patterns and you can minimize that and stuff like this. Or there might be just some straight up maths that you can just go, oh, this is, pump it in and get good good uh, numbers to use as your magic numbers. I don't know. But at this point, I'm feeling like I get these class of uh, hashing functions at least. I don't know about you, what, like, um, but I'm kind of like thinking we're coming up on the hour. Maybe we call this a short and sweet stream and we just say, okay, we, we've torn apart a couple of things. And then um, next time we look at, I think, I think it'd be really cool to get more into one of the noise functions because that stuff is just so much fun to play with. Like, take back. Yeah. Berlin noise of UV. This is the stuff we were doing earlier, right? Like, times it by 20 and then mapping it from 1, 1 to 0, 1 and then putting it into this kind of space and then like let's use time as the third thing and then we realize that time's going way too fast so we just do I mean like oh that's now too slow yeah it's just way too easy to have fun with this stuff um, oh man, love it. Just add these together. No, in fact, let's just mix them. And this is where I forget that I'm streaming and just go and play with stuff for a while. Yeah, we got two different noise levels and we can just find a spot that kind of feels nice. What was that? Oh. 0.8 somewhere. Yeah. Oh, right. I've got to stop because otherwise I'll uh, I'll just play with that the whole time. Right. Let's see what's going on here. Oh man, I should have been checking the stream a little earlier. Um. Ah, oh, sorry, Ferris. I, I totally missed your message there, and I got I got busy playing with stuff. 
yeah, so make some kind of exponential curve by scaling x. Um, yeah, we could totally do that. We can do that a second. Um, oh, connection's cutting out. Oh, that's a bummer. One second. Let's let's just check. I've actually left up the um, Twitch connection manager thing. So far, actually, I think uh, I think the stream's been behaving the whole time. It's some little blips, but I'm I'm hoping that's all been a uh, that's all been going. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, the um the, the general pattern. But it's totally like I mean, all of this stuff that I'm doing, all of this is um open source and online. I mean, it's all on GitHub. You can find all the projects there. This Fraggle thing is totally a work in progress, but I mean, feel free to play with it. I just wanted a shader toy like thing um Oh, just to start doing stuff like this, because it's been so much just uh, in the compiler and things like this. It feels good to finally be using it. And, and yeah, again, messing around with like passing functions around in GLSL is just like heresy. It's really good. Um, whoop, I'm on. The <laughs> I'm controlling the wrong computer right now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's scroll down here. Sweet. All right. So yeah, well, that's, that's what I was saying. Um, maybe we call it a day? What do you guys think? I, th I think I think this is a good place to stop because if we get into Perlin itself now, this could get into a many, many hour stream. And I'm testing my luck as it is. Or did we lose everyone? We shall see. Oh man. These are just... They're just cool toys. learn a lot that's that's great man i, I feel like i've uh <laughs> let's do a second session for many hours i think you know actually i think the fact i'm saying that may, maybe we should cut it up maybe maybe we should stop for now and i'll um that'll give me a chance to go and do some reading um uh, before we do we do more and just basically thanks so much for you guys coming down this was uh this was sick and i'm just super glad that we were able to get through a couple of those and see the pattern that was really nice um so yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna try and do these weekly. Let's let's do these weekly, and um, I'm really open to suggestions of what kind of stuff that you you guys want to see, because like obviously I've got a I, I haven't documented all the stuff I've done so far. So there's like compilers and all kind of stuff. We can we can go in and start playing with Keppel. We can do some GL stuff, or I can do some regular old Lisp tutorials as well. Um, so. Ping me on what you want, and we'll start putting together some kind of plan. And we'll do, we'll definitely do more of this. And we'll definitely work out how a few more of these noise functions working. Then, we, then we've got to actually make some, some cool shit with it as well. So, yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Um, I guess I'll see you next week. Ciao.